Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome once again to our semi-weekly update here at Prince of Peace. Uh, nice day out there today. Our, even our poles bending over today out there. So uh, this is not a good day for anything outside. And uh, tomorrow I heard it won't be either. But we're hoping for a nice weekend and uh, a nice Sunday to ring the bells at noon. How's that? That's what we're praying for. So speaking of prayer, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we come to you with humble hearts. We come to you with grateful hearts. We come to you with struggling hearts. We ask you to guide us through this storm. Help us, Lord, to be able to see your holy will. Help us to be able to support each other, to be able to nurture each other, to be able to love each other so that we can help get each other through this together and soon be able to be together as a parish family, as communities, as families. They can be, can be together and support and love each other and be able to see each other again and care for each other in person. We ask this all, Lord, in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as you can maybe tell from the tone of that prayer for me and my voice, um, I'm having some issues right now with all of this. It's, a, it's, been, it's getting to be a struggle here. I miss people terribly. And uh, I wish that we could somehow, some way, be able to at least have people here, more people here, um, I actually measured the space yesterday. I measured our entire church and I spaced every other pew and six feet in the pews that were gonna be occupied. And I came up with 184 occupants that we could have here socially distanced correctly. Um, I'm sure that means nothing to the people who um, are creating the rules and regulations right now, but I thought I would just do that just for the heck of it. So. Uh, it's it's difficult right now, but we'll get through it. And you need to pray for me, and I, I'll continue to keep praying for you. And that's the first thing I have on my list, is I know early on I talked about praying the rosary and asking the Virgin Mary for her help, for her intercession to help us through this. And I, I hope that some of you who maybe weren't praying the rosary before have said, I'm going to make that a practice and have done it. We still have a lot of rosaries that are out in the gathering area that if you would like one, it's yours for the, to take and to keep. Uh, they're nice. They're actually nice rosaries. So if you're interested in that, please stop by the gathering area and, and pick one up. And we also have uh, instructions on how to pray the rosary if you've never done it before or if you haven't done it in a while. So hopefully that can be a source of strength for you and your families as well. One really kind of neat thing that we have just created in the last few days here is we are going to have available each Monday at 9 a.m. a limited amount of meal bags. And by that, what I mean is that we're going to have a, a dinner in a bag. It's going to consist of spaghetti, uh, mac and cheese for those fussy kids who won't eat spaghetti, uh, applesauce, canned green beans, green crackers, and sauce for the spaghetti, and a prayer card as well. We would not let this go without a prayer card. And we'll have somewhere around 30 or 35 bags available on Monday. And these are designed for people who are struggling financially who could use a, a meal like that. So it'll be like a complete dinner. Or if, uh, if you know of somebody who's struggling and you think could use it. So please... In either situation, if you there is no judgments when you walk in and you grab a bag. Either way, if you think you could use one for your family for that for an evening, great. If you think you could, you know, of somebody who could use a, a meal as well, please stop by and pick one up. And we'll do that every Monday. We 
got enough donations now that uh, we can keep doing this for several weeks. I hope we have to go on that long, but we can do it for a while. And I hope it's just another way that you can feel that this parish cares about others in the community, even if they're not members of the parish, and that this is a way we can serve people by being able to provide a nice meal for dinner some evening of the week. Today, out in our gathering area, it's quite busy. Uh, in our fellowship hall, we have Red, Claw, Red Cross blood drive going on. And all the spots are full. So they've all been taken and people are generously giving their blood. And it, it, this goes on till 5.30 is the last appointment. So they have been here since 12.30 and the schedule has been full. So I'm very appreciative to you if you're a parishioner and you have given, and anybody else who has given as well. I think it's this is a wonderful cause and so needed at this time for people who are in, in need of just blood, period. But um, what a generous way to donate what God's given you back to others is to give blood. So we are going to actually have another blood drive here. We, are, we just scheduled today on June 30th, which is Tuesday, again from 12.30 to 5.00. 30. So you'll see that show up as a sign up at the Red Cross blood, blood site and we'll have it on our website as well. So that'll be another sign up and that's about two months away. So it's just another way that we're trying our best to be able to provide services, to provide things that are in need for people who are hurting so badly right now. We are having our spring flower sales I mentioned on Saturday on Saturday, May 9th, from 10 to 2. There will be a flyer in the bulletin this weekend that will show you the different arrangements that are available and the cost. And there will also be like a little cutout sheet that you could bring that day if you'd like. We're not going to take pre-orders, but you can bring that day. And if you don't want to come in and shop, we will bring things out to you. Uh, but we need exact payment, exact cash, or we need a credit card or a debit card. Uh, to pay, so we don't want to handle a lot of money that day. We'd just prefer to be able to fill your orders and take the exact cash and let you go. Or if you want to come shopping, we will limit it to eight people because we'll have two people working here. And uh, so we'll have eight people in at the time. And I'm praying for a nice day so that maybe we can do some of this stuff outside or at least you can stay outside and be comfortable and not like a day to, like today where you'd be freezing out there if you were standing out there waiting. So that'll happen on May 9th. That's the day before Mother's Day. Hopefully you can find something for your mother, your wife, your grandmother, your someone who's like a mother to you, um, whoever the case may be. Uh, lots of arrangements from Hartman's, just like we've always had. So I'm praying that that'll be something that will kind of energize us as a parish as well. Friday we will have Holy Hour here um, from at 9 o'clock from 9 to 10. So we'll have the Blessed Sacrament exposed here. We will uh, do the Holy Hour readings, prayers, novenas, uh, the litanies, I'm sorry, not novenas, litanies. And we will have a benediction. So if you would, are interested in being here physically, again, we have a limit of 10. I think we'll have three people in here, mus musician, cantor, and myself. So seven people. So if you're interested in coming, we'd welcome. Obviously, we've got plenty of room. You're welcome to be here. Otherwise, we're going to live stream it at 9 o'clock. You can watch it at that point for, for the entire hour and or watch it later on that day. So holy hour at 9 a.m. Now, Friday also is very important in our country. It's the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, for one. And it's also the day that all dioceses in the United States and Canada are going to re-consecrate our countries. So in the U.S. and Canada, we're going to re-consecrate our country to the, the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's who we have uh, given our countries to in the past, but we're going to re-consecrate our countries. The bishops are going to do that. Here in the Diocese of Green Bay, we will have Mass at Our Lady of Good Help, which will be live-streamed, and it's going to be presided by uh, Father John Brissard, who's the rector out at Our Lady of, of Good Help. 
That'll be live streamed on Our Lady of Good Help's website, which is championshrine.org. And we'll put that on our website. So don't worry if you haven't written that down. It's championshrine.org. But we'll have it out there. And it's going to be at 2 o'clock on Friday. It'll be, it'll be live streamed on their website from Our Lady of Good Help. Another way to maybe stay connected with in prayer to our Blessed Virgin Mother um, and for our country, which is, you know, in need of prayers to the Blessed Virgin so that she can, we can ask for her intercession to Jesus and for the country of Canada as well. So we know that Jesus is with us and he help helped us, but we're going to ask his mom for help as well. And hopefully that his mom will hit him hard enough to say, we got to get this done, son, so let's go. And uh, we are being patient, but prayerfully patient. We want to be make sure that we keep diligent in our prayer and keep praying to the Blessed Virgin Mary, keep praying to Jesus and ask for his help. I was uh, talking to a parishioner on the phone today, and uh, he's a knight of Columbus, so am I. But uh, there's an interesting thing on their website. So if you would go to kfc.org, that's kfc is all one word. And this is really for the men in our parish. And this is not a recruiting tool. This is just a series that's out there. It's called Into the Breach. It's a 13-part series, 13 different videos, which are not very long. They're about 10 to 13 minutes each, but on different topics that I think will help us as men be better fathers, husbands, co-workers, friends uh, during this crisis that we're in. So I'd, if you're uh, looking for things to, to try to find on the internet, uh, I would really strongly suggest you go to kfc.org and type in Into the Breach and you will see that series pop right up, right, right on the front, and you can just pick out whenever, whatever one you'd like to watch. There was one on suffering that I was watching just briefly before I came in here today, and I was really, it was really interesting. I just didn't watch it all, but I will get to the rest of it. So I would strongly advise that you take a look at that, gentlemen, if you are looking for help for yourself, for your family, for your work relationships right now, whatever the case may be, just go out there and feel free to, to browse at any of that and, and view any of those videos. Well, I guess getting on my knees on Saturday didn't quite work. We, uh, our bishop's appeal goal, we are now at 99%. We're at $616 short of our goal. We have now received 400 gifts. And I think here's an interesting statistic for you. The average gift from our parish, from a parishioner here, has been $175.46. And the average gift throughout the diocese um, has been $213. So we're about $35 below the average. And I think that's a good thing. I, I think it's good because what I've been asking all along, and I know I'm probably getting to the wrong people. Most of you watching have already given to the bishop's appeal. But if you are a, if you're a parishioner and hasn't given yet, I'm appealing to you right now. And the more gifts we get, it's not about how much you give. That's it's good. Don't get me wrong. That's good. But it's about just being part of this family and helping out this family so that we can knock out this assessment. This is not a suggestion from the diocese. This is an assessment, and if we don't hit our goal, then we end up having to write a check um, at the end of the summer. So please, if you haven't given yet, let's just get this knocked out. Uh, some of the ladies in the office have said to me, if we hit our goal, I have to do 15 push-ups. I, I think I'm halfway strong for an old guy, but I haven't done push-ups in a while, so I'll, I'll probably do that, but I'll, I hope I don't hurt myself. Uh, uh, I'll try it, though, if we, get to the, if we get to our goal. So I'm hoping by Saturday you can watch me do push-ups and see how much I struggle with that. I've been chatting with Father Ryan about the sacrament of reconciliation. We had reconciliation this morning at 10 a.m., and we had some people in. But I think it's still a sacrament that a lot of us are either too afraid to experience or 
not willing to experience. And the grace from that sacrament is so special. It is such a feeling of healing when you walk out of there. It is a sacrament of healing more than any other sacrament that we have. So, uh, Father has agreed to hear masses, or hear confessions, I'm sorry, Sundays at 11, so after our 10 o'clock mass that we live stream, Sundays at 11, Wednesdays at 10, so after our 9 o'clock mass on Wednesdays, which was today, he was here, and then also Thursdays, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. So we're trying to hit weekend, morning during the week, evening during the week to see if a time would fit into your schedule. So we're going to continue this for a while. So Sunday at 11, Wednesday at 10 a.m., Thursday at 6 p.m. If you would like to experience that wonderful sacrament that we have. And on Sunday, again, as I mentioned right up front, we will ring the bells at noon. Last weekend, last Sunday, I don't know, we had somewhere between 70 and 75 cars parked, all socially distanced. Um, But it was really a beautiful scene. It was cold out. There was a cold wind. But people, um, some of them got out of their cars and talked from a distance. And what I saw more than anything that I haven't seen in quite a while are a lot of smiles on people's faces. So I, I think... It's not really about playing, listening to the bells as much as it is just being able to get together with your parish family. And if you want to spread the word to others, we have plenty of room in this parking lot to handle more cars socially distanced. It's not, that is not the issue. So you can park out here and not feel like you're going to be on top of somebody. And I do think there is something about that event now that's becoming a more of a, it's becoming a community event that can bring us together and still help us respect the rules that we have set for us, the guidelines that we have set for us so that we don't endanger anybody's health. So Sunday at noon, once again, confessions right before that. So you can experience the sacrament of reconciliation and then you can come out to the parking lot and and see all of your friends. All right. I think I got through my list again today. One last thing I'll just say on the money side, the Faith Direct thing's going very well. Uh, It's our online giving source. We, we continue to get sign-ups there. So if you would like to be able to give to the parish either through your checking or savings or credit or debit card and would like a simple way to do that, Faith Direct is the way to do it. You can donate one time, weekly, monthly, annually, whatever you'd prefer. You'll see all the options there. It's right on our website. If you click on Donate when you go to our front page, it'll take you right to Faith Direct and you can... Uh, handle things through that. If you do have questions, please call our office. We're happy to help you there. Okay. Um, Just to reiterate maybe how I feel right now, and I shouldn't be talking about me, but I, I do know other people are probably feeling the same way as me. I, I miss all of you terribly. I, I, this, we are not wired as humans to live separately. We, are, we were created to help each other, to be with each other. Even if you're the most introverted individual in the world, and I'm an introvert by nature, we're not wired to be alone or even to be with our spouses who we love or our families who we love. That's great. And I, I know it's been good for a lot of families and a lot of couples to be able to, to reunite that way. But I do think we're wired to be with each other. That's how God created us. And it's the thing that has created the biggest hole in my heart right now. And I know for some of you that I've seen here, it's the same thing. And the best thing I can say is let's continue to pray. Grab a rosary. Grab your rosary. Pray to the Virgin Mary. Let's beg our Blessed Mother to ask her son, And when she usually asks her son for something, he doesn't say no to his mom. He has to say yes. So let's continue to pray. Let's be diligent. Let's be supportive of each other. And let's just keep going and keep doing what we're doing. I know God will get us through this. I know our numbers here will get better. And I know that slowly, 
we'll be able to reunite and do things here back together again. But in the meantime, we have Mass tomorrow at 9 a.m. and Holy Hour at 9 a.m. on Friday, both live streamed. And then Saturday, I will be back with another update at 4 o'clock. And Sunday, we will have Mass at 10, Confessions at 11, and our parking lot event, Ringing the Bells at noon. Praying for a good weekend of nice weather. I hope that that really happens, what they're saying. So please, everyone, continue to pray for yourselves, your families, and for each other. Stay safe, stay healthy, and may God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.